Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. We're given two squares and a triangle. This hundred is for the area of the square and the 24 is for the area of the triangle. And it wants us to find the area of this circle. If you wanna try it on your own, pause it right now because I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. First in this square, since the area is a hundred, each side of the square will be equal to 10. And then this triangle here is the same thing as this triangle, same thing as this triangle, and same thing as this triangle. All of these triangles will be the same. I've proven this in other videos, but we can do it again real quick. We're gonna prove these two triangles are congruent. This angle and this angle are both angles in the larger square. That means they're both right angles. And then this angle is an angle of this square, so it's also a right angle. Let's call this upper angle and this triangle alpha, and this lower angle beta. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle equals 180. So we know that alpha plus 90 plus beta equals 180. And then these three angles also add up to 180 degrees. So we have alpha plus 90 plus beta gives us 180 degrees. And then once again, the sum of the interior angles of this triangle is 180. And since this is 90 and this is beta, this has to be alpha. So now these two right triangles have three corresponding angles. That means they're similar right triangles. And each each of them has a hypotenuse of 10 that's only possible if the triangles are congruent. So this triangle is congruent to this triangle and it also has an area of 24. And using the same method, we can prove this triangle and this triangle are also congruent to this original triangle. Here are all the angles labeled in yellow. Now let's focus on this right triangle. Let's label this side X and this side Y. And visually it looks like this side is shorter than this side, so let's assume X is less than Y. So now we have two variables and we can write two equations. The first one's the area of a triangle. It's one half base times height equals the area. Or in this case, one half X times Y equals 24. And then since this is a right triangle, we can also do Pythagorean theorem. It'll be X squared plus Y squared equals 10 squared. And 10 squared is equal to 100. Now we have two equations and two variables. Let's solve this with substitution. For the top equation, I want to get this y alone on the left-hand side. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 2 over x. On the left-hand side, this x on bottom and this x on top will cancel each other out. And then 2 times 1 half is equal to 1. So this all cancels out and we're left with y. Does that make sense, y? And then on the right-hand side, the 2 over x can multiply by the 24 to give us 48 over x. And now in the place of this y, we can substitute 48 over x. Now we have x squared plus 48 over x squared equals 100. Let's start right here. Anytime you have a fraction to a power, that power can distribute to both the top and the bottom. So 48 over x squared is the same thing as 48 squared over x squared. And then 48 squared is equal to 2,304. So for the next step, I don't really like fractions, so let's get rid of this denominator. We can multiply both sides of the equation by x squared. On the left-hand side, this x squared will distribute to both of these terms, giving us x to the fourth plus 2,304. And on the right hand side, we have 100x squared. Let's subtract 100x squared from both sides and we end up with x to the fourth minus 100x squared plus 2,304 equals zero. There's several different ways we can solve this. Let's try factoring. In order to factor this, we need two numbers that add to negative 100 and multiply to 2,304. Well, that ends up being negative 64 and negative 36. These add up to this and they multiply to this. For the next step, anytime you have something times something equals zero, that'll be true if this equals zero or if this equals zero. Now I ran out of room, so let's clean this up and bring these up here. To solve this, we can add 64 to both sides, and for this one, we can add 36 to both sides. We end up with x squared is equal to 64, or x squared is equal to 36. From here, we can square root both sides of both equations, and we end up with x equal to plus or minus eight, or x equal to plus or minus six. Immediately, I can tell you that x is not a negative value, so we can change this plus or minus eight into eight, and this plus or minus six into six. And now we have two potential values for x. Let's find each corresponding y value. In the place of this x, let's plug in eight. And in the place of this x, let's plug in six. 48 over eight is six, and 48 over six is eight. And looking up here earlier, I made an assumption that x is less than y. So this scenario will not work out. So we now have x and y. In the place of the x, let's plug in six. And in the place of the y, let's plug in eight. And then since this triangle is congruent to this triangle, this side is also six and this side is also eight. Let's focus on the triangle that contains our circle. 
enhance. Let's construct this radius perpendicular to this base that intersects at this tangent point and label it little r. And now we can make a formula for the area of our circle. It's going to be pi little r squared. This looks important. Let's put a box around it. And let's drag it down here. And let's construct this radius perpendicular to this side that intersects at this tangent point. Now inside here, we have another square. Since these were drawn perpendicular, all these angles are right angles. And then since these two adjacent sides are equal to little r, these two sides will also be equal to little r. Now this is pretty cool. This is one of my favorite parts. This whole base has a length of eight. That means this portion is going to be 8 minus r. Let's move this 10 up. These are two tangent lines that intersect at this point. The length of this will equal the length of this. They're both 8 minus r. Here are some notes right here. Anytime two tangent lines of the same circle intersect, these two parts will always be congruent. And then we can do the same thing over here. This whole distance is 6, so this piece will be 6 minus r. And then this will be equal to this, so it's also 6 minus r. So for the next step, let's focus on this hypotenuse. The hypotenuse of this triangle has a length of 8 minus r plus 6 minus r, but it also has a length of 10. So we can say 8 minus r plus 6 minus r equals 10. From here, we can combine like terms. 8 plus 6 is 14. Negative r plus negative r is negative 2r, and all that's still equal to 10. Next, we can subtract 14 from both sides. That gives us negative 2r equals negative 4. And then after we divide both sides by negative 2, we end up with r is equal to 2. And now we have the radius of our circle. For the pi r squared in the place of the r, let's plug in 2. 2 squared is equal to 4, so we end up with question mark is equal to 4 pi. And that is the answer to our question. In this given diagram, the area of the circle is 4 pi. And that's approximately equal to 12.566. How exciting.